I am a nutrient. I provide the body with energy. I can be found in grains. I start with the letter C. Who am I? If you said carbohydrates, you are indeed correct. Hi guys, welcome back to Ferris Tutorials. Stay tuned for the lesson on carbohydrates. Section 2 Nutrition and Health and in today's episode we'll be looking at content 4 which is entitled Carbohydrates in the Diet. Now let us look at the focus points. In today's lesson we'll be looking at the chemical composition of carbohydrates, production of carbohydrates, classification, function, sources and also health conditions associated with improper intake of carbohydrates. Now, let us start with the chemical composition of carbohydrates. Good? Now, what are you're seeing is a diagram on your screen with some letters, right? Now, can you identify which uh, chemical element does each letter stands for? So we're seeing the letter H, C, and O. Can you tell which chemical elements those represent? If your answer was hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, you are correct. Now, carbohydrates are made up of the following elements. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Good? Now, let us look at the production of carbohydrates. Good? Now, I'm drawing a little on your science knowledge based on what is being displayed on your screen. Can you tell which process is taking place? So we see carbon dioxide plus water and light equal what? Oxygen and also carbon dioxide. Very good. Now, if you mention that that process is called photosynthesis, you are correct. Now, where do carbs originate? We're looking at where carbs come from, right? So they originate as glucose in plants, right? And glucose is the most abundant carbohydrate. Now let's zoom in a little more on the production of carbohydrates. Good. Now photosynthesis, it, this is a general equation for photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is the process by which what? Plants produce food. Awesome. So the equation we're looking at is what? So it is carbon dioxide plus water and of course light energy, whether it be sunlight or whatever light source it is there that can be used, it will produce what? Glucose and gas. And glucose in the form of carbohydrate. Now, quick question. Which of the following are the reactants of the reaction? So what reacts to produce carbon carbohydrates? Good. So if your answer is carbon dioxide and water plus the light energy, you are correct. And that would be option number two. And then the products would be what? Glucose, which is carbohydrate and also oxygen, right? And that would be the first point that we have there for number two. Now guys, let us now move on to the classification of carbohydrates. How are carbohydrates classified? Right? Now we have two major categories, good? Or we may say two major groups and they are called simple and complex. 
and under simple we have two subcategories which are monosaccharides and examples of monosaccharides are glucose fructose and galactose and the next subcategory under simple sugars are disaccharides and how do we arrive at disaccharides it's one monosaccharides plus glucose which is always constant now examples of disaccharides are maltose now under the group complex the subcategory is polysaccharides right and examples that fall on the polysaccharides are starch fiber and glycogen good now let us now zoom in a little on simple sugars now simple sugars monosaccharides are single sugars and that is why they are considered as simple sugars meaning that what there's nothing there to be broken down per se it is easily absorbed in our bodies or in our bloodstreams now the examples of these monosaccharides are glucose fructose and galactose now glucose serves as the essential energy source and is commonly known as blood sugar or dextrose fructose is the sweetest occurs naturally in honey and fruits and is added to many foods in the form of high fructose corn syrup the final one is galactose and even though it is rare, it really occurs naturally in single sugar it is considered as a monosaccharide now let us look at how we arrive at these disaccharides, right? Now, disaccharides are pairs of monosaccharides, one of which is always glucose. Good. So glucose is always constant. So let's take the first one. So glucose and galactose will give us lactose, good, which is a disaccharide. And it is also, as that name suggests, lactose coming from milk right so it is also called milk sugar glucose and glucose will give us maltose good and glucose and fructose will give us sucrose good and as you can see displayed there sources of maltose includes what by products that are made by the fermentation process as that uh favorite some person favorite uh favorite drink the malta you know that it is high in maltose and it will also give a burst of energy now sources of sucrose also includes cane sugar sugar beets and also honey now let us look at the other group and this group is called the complex carbohydrates so we have just looked at the simple carbohydrates and the two subcategories that fall under simple are monosaccharides and disaccharides now let us look at complex now the first category that falls under complex carbohydrates is starches so storage from form of glucose in plants and it is also found in grains so we're talking about rice right and it is also found in tubers so those yam the sheen and also in legumes good now glycogen is a storage form of glucose in our body right and it provides a rapid release of energy when needed good now there's also dietary fiber which provides structure in plants they are very diverse and cannot be broken down by human enzymes so that is why when persons are maybe constipated they may what consume dietary fiber or we may speak of roughage so because it can be broken down for our uh with human enzymes get what it regulates our bowel movement we have to pass it out because it can't be broken down
Now there are two types of fiber. We have soluble fibers and we have insoluble fibers. Now soluble fiber, fibers can be digested by intestinal bacteria, right? And this is a property known as fermentability. These fibers are found in fruits and vegetables, oats, barley, and legumes. On the other hand, insoluble fibers are not digested by intestinal bacteria. These fibers are found in whole grains and vegetables. Now, let us look at a little comparison as it relates to insoluble fibers versus soluble fibers good now the first one for insoluble fiber so it binds with water to help reduce to help produce bowel movement as i said before it prevents what constipation good now soluble on the other hand eating foods with soluble fiber reduces your blood cholesterol level and your risk of developing heart disease. Good. Now, good sources of insoluble fibers are wheat products, leafy vegetables, and also fruits. Good. Good sources of soluble fiber are wheat, bran, barley, rye, oats, whole grain, pastas, breads, and also cereals good now that we have learned what is carbohydrate where did it originate how it's produced and also the different classifications and their subcategories we're now going to move on to the functions of carbohydrates in the diet now what are the functions of carbohydrates i know provides energy may be the first thing that came to your mind right but today we're also going to explore other functions. So number one, as you stated, it provides energy. Good. Two, carbohydrates act as a protein spiral so that protein can be used for its primary function rather than a source of energy. Good. So when we only consume a uh, protein with no form of carbohydrate, you know that protein is a secondary source of give us a, uh, is a secondary source of energy, right? Awesome. So when we consume protein and carbohydrates together, guess what? The carbohydrates spare the protein in that the carbohydrates will provide us with energy while the protein can maintain its primary function which is to build and repair body tissues good also another function is a high fiber diet helps prevent constipation good may reduce the risk of colon cancer and may help prevent heart disease good and those are some lifestyle diseases that are coming out there or nutrition related health problems that we looked at earlier on in the session good now let us look at sources of carbohydrates and i can hear you naming a few based on these images right awesome now sugars soft drinks and candies are sources of simple carbohydrates and remember when we speak of simple carbohydrates we're speaking of what those carbohydrates that are easily digested in our bodies breads and cereals provide starches fruits and vegetables and whole grain also offer fiber and based on these this image these images here you can list a few right awesome good job guys all right now we're looking at the health conditions associated with improper intake of carbohydrates so as the term suggests improper if you we may be consuming too little or too much now, what are some of the health conditions that come to your mind as it relates to consuming too much carbohydrates or too little carbohydrates? 
let's look what they are so the first one here is obesity now do you think obesity is um derived from having too little or too much if your answer is too much you are correct good awesome job now let us look at another health condition which is low energy and what does low energy mean that means that what you can't go out you feel fatigue you can't go go out through your day you're feeling so tired good awesome no constipation being constipated mean your bowel movements are tough or happen less often than normal no symptoms include few bowel movements trouble having a bowel movement as in like you're straining to go hard or small stools a sense that everything didn't come out uh swollen belly or belly pain and also some persons may throw up good now do you think constipation happens from having too much or too little when we're speaking about in a, the, the the improper amount awesome too little that means we're not having our dietary fiber or our roughage all right there's also diverticulitis right no diverticulosis happens when pouches which are called diverticula form in the wall of the colon if these pouches get inflamed or infected it is called diverticulitis good and it can be very painful good awesome and it's a buildup of constipation when persons are forcing and trying to go and then what ends up uh straining the colon good all right so some in some symptoms may include belly pain usually in the lower left side that in sometimes worse when you move this is the most common symptom right fever and chills bloating and gas diarrhea or constipation and also nausea and sometimes vomiting now diabetes consuming too much carbohydrates someone can become diabetic also develop developing heart diseases good now cardiovascular disease or we may say heart disease generally refers to the conditions that involve narrowed or blocked blood vessels that can lead to a heart attack chest pain or we may say angina or even stroke now other heart conditions such as those that affect your heart muscles valve or rhythm also are considered as forms of heart disease good now it's time for our checkpoint now what are the chemical composition of carbohydrates how are carbohydrates produced how are carbohydrates classified? Give four functions of carbohydrates in the diet. Give four sources of carbohydrate. Explain three health conditions associated with improper intake of carbohydrates. And based on our lesson, you should be able to ace all of these checkpoints. You're awesome. You've made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know would find this video useful. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.